and there we are what is going on everybody welcome or welcome back to get right on in i am andrew for those of you who do not know and today i am joined by the wonderful michael clark of the patience of a dead man trilogy hello michael hello andrew and thanks for having me on and hello if there's anybody watching we just posted <laughs> that we we're gonna have this so maybe yes. nobody but they can watch later yes always got the watch back um so michael tell us a little bit about what is going on behind you and who you are and a little bit about your series before we dive into some questions okay um well i have uh, my main character back here it's mildred and um she's uh supervising and over here i have a a banner that i was going to use at a at a convention and then the convention got canceled so you might as well get some mileage out of it and wow. um i wrote the patience of a dead man trilogy and it's about a divorced man that is looking to start over and goes and buys a house in new hampshire and uh he wants to flip it and he's working on it alone he's a construction guy to start with so he's handy and um, as he's working on the place alone, he realizes that um, uh, there's a journal left by the previous owner, and there's also some uh, ghosts popping around. So I just, I was going for eerie and spooky and that kind of emotion. I think you nailed that pretty well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about that house because um, you were saying before we started that you live in the city where the story takes place, right? yeah and like it's it's really not like a city like it's a country town kind of like you were saying that you grew up in a country town so it's for for new hampshire you know it's a i, I don't know what the population is it's the town is is really tilted but i called it sanborn and um it's on the way to concord um but it's a it's the house is on a country road and um mile or two from downtown which is not much of a downtown at all and uh it's pretty secluded and there's no street lights or anything like that he lives on a dirt road uh, but i did live in it um i um moved there in 1971 and i was five years old and lived there till i was nine and if you buy the book there's a map in the, in the at the beginning of the book and all i did was i took a picture of um like an overhead view with uh, in from google, uh, google earth so it's the actual property um the only thing that's different about it is i put a turret on the house like a victorian turret i thought that would add a little bit of um, you know, a bunch of stuff goes on inside the turret we didn't have one in the real house but there was actually a, a grove in the woods and uh, a pond and, and a big meadow so it was 23 acres a bunch of woods the grove was or i've come to learn that it's it, it probably wasn't a overgrown christmas tree farm but it was probably a um, a what do they call it a timber plantation like they probably were just trying to forest the area but all the rows are in perfectly straight lines so it's like you're you're walking in the woods it's everything's uh, the grove the man made part of it is camouflaged by the wild woods so you'd be walking through the woods and all of a sudden boom you're in like a hallway like a perfect hallway and it was pretty spooky because you'd always you know nobody else was there usually and um the canopy overhead kind of blocked out the sun for the most part and um as a kid you know as a six seven eight nine year old kid running through there i always got a funny feeling in the pit of my stomach and uh you know it stuck with me. I actually yeah. snuck onto the property a couple of weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> and really? uh yeah, and uh, you know, I kind of like I parked on a side street and walked through the end of the field and into the woods and it's not quite how I remember it. Um but then I drove by the house and uh the owner the new the owners are are uh they've got all kinds of trespassing signs and you know the one with the pistol pointed at the at the at your face and you know if you come here you're gonna you, you're, you're gonna stay here that kind of stuff so i was like well i just went trespassing on the wrong piece of land i guess but i got away with it yeah 
I wonder if they know about the book. <laughs> I don't think so. I, you know, it's not that big yet, but I mean, hopefully someday. I don't know. One day. I was thinking about like I, I'm actually like I had an idea like where um, you know about writing. You're a writer. And the shelf life of a new book is kind of quick, you know, it's it has like a honeymoon and then it it doesn't go away, but it kind of like gets rolled over by all the new other new books coming out. And my dream is to have it made into a movie, whether that's, you know, far fetched or whatever. That's what I'd love to have happen. So I had a, an idea to. To draw to make a graphic novel, I haven't I used to draw as a kid. And um, I haven't done it since then, since probably high school. But I've actually sat down um, while watching TV for the last, I don't know, three weeks or so. And I started sketching. And I've got like like a, a, a printing, uh, you know, copy paper, like a stack, like this thick, four pictures on a page of like storyboarding it, you know. And I think I'm excited about it. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to end up making a graphic novel. But... You know, I might run into a roadblock and realize that I stink when I when it comes time. Right now, it's all stick figures and, yeah. you know, half-ass sketches. But uh, anyway, I'm having fun doing that. I think it's a good it, idea, though. You like the idea? I do like I, But I also agree with the idea of it being a movie because I was thinking the same thing when I was reading it. Um, and I had a little – there was a group chat with me and Wesley and a couple of other people. And I was talking about that while I was reading it. She had just come off of that interview that she did with you. And she was like, yeah, he said that that was what he was thinking too. And just like, I think, I mean, I read it all in one go for the whole trilogy. So I oh, feel man. Like, like the entire picture kind of at once, which I liked, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like the entire, like arc of the full, full story. So yeah, like the whole thing would work as. Uh, cool. Yeah, I would love to, you know, if it's if it's going to be one movie, it, sh it should be three, because yeah, I would right. think, you know, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm 55 and, and I'm not going to I'm not going to be um, I'm not going to have this, you know, unless I keep writing into my 80s or something, I'm not going to have 30 books out there that are all, you know, giving me their little, uh, you know, X number of dollars a month. Um, so I'm kind of like, I don't know, I'm just not done with this idea, I guess I, I want to uh basically just do all the work i can do i could never direct it or finance a movie or anything like that of course um and i've been watching that netflix uh show it's called the movies that made us and it's got a lot of like a halloween yeah. have you seen that that's yeah. so good i recommend that to anybody but it shows how like at any given moment a movie like the plug can be pulled you know so I don't know. It, it, I know it is a long shot, but if I storyboard it, maybe it'll get somebody interested, you know? And what else do I got to do, you know, except write another book and have that last 90 days out there and then get rolled over by all the other new, other ones. So, But I did write another book that is not The Patience of a Dead Man, and it, I submitted it um, to a small press publisher in um, at the end of August. And the way things work, um, you may know it, I'm all it's all new to me, so I'll just explain what I know have learned is that it takes six months to look at, six months for like a yes or a no. And then, you know, it might take a year after that for them to because they got all these other books in the work. So I haven't got my answer yet. Um, but you know, uh, if they say no, I'll just self publish it, I guess, but because I don't want to wait another six months or, or whatever, you know. But um, so there is another book out there. It's about um, it's about the dead bodies on Mount Everest, basically. So it's not a it's not a haunted house. So it's it's a, it's more of like an adventure horror thing. So uh, some of my beta readers were like, what are you doing on that Mount Everest? You know, that's not scary. And I'm like, I think it's scary. I love it. So I don't know. Different reaction. Yeah, I feel like that would be a good like a solid book. Um, and I, well, with having, um, back to Mildred, I guess here and you yeah. know, talk about how you're still playing with this idea and all of this, would you say, especially with having spent a portion of your childhood in that house that Mildred has kind of been brewing the whole time or did that all kind of come later or was there anything specific about that house that kind of spawned your interest in horror stories? No, I, like Mildred was not part of that, but. But the setting was 
you know, it was an old house. It was built in 1860. Um, you've seen, if you've read the book, so you've seen the the floor plan where you could be down at the far end, you know, the the ro- the room by the road, and look, the 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 doorways were almost perfectly lined up where you could see all the way down to almost by the barn, like I don't know, 50, 60 feet or whatever. So that was kind of you know creepy that you know. I don't know. Just there were a bunch of things that were creepy about it. It's old and and um, every floorboard creaked and all that stuff. So I just, not to mention it has the pond and it has the the woods and the big field and the and the the timber uh, plantation in the middle of the woods. So I don't know. I I don't remember exactly how I put the two together, but I knew I wanted creepy. I wanted eerie. You know, like that's my favorite kind of movie, like Sixth Sense or. Um, the others with Nicole Kidman, you know, like those just a slow burn kind of, or the changeling with George C. Scott, you know, those are all creepy things. Like I, I like a lot of different kinds of horror, but that's my favorite kind. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was one thing I really did enjoy about this novel was that it wasn't so like grotesque in your face. You know what I mean? Like it definitely yeah. was, like eerie and there was just that underlying tone the whole time of like what is really happening because it's a ghost story, yeah but yeah there's very little blood in it um very and i won't blood. i won't go into that but uh another thing related to that that surprised me going back to that netflix show the um the movies that made us i was watching the halloween um uh, episode how, how they made the movie halloween there's not a lot of blood in that movie like it's it's just the knife for the most part, and uh, the kid kills his sister at the beginning, and there's some blood on the on the blade, and but it's not really a, like it's almost not a slasher. Like yeah. I know it is a slasher, but it's it's they toned it down quite a bit, and um, I just didn't I didn't really click, and I, I think I that was always my favorite movie uh, growing up. That was the scariest movie I ever saw. I think it's lost something now uh, just because everybody copied it where there's a killer that just can't be killed. That was the first one. And uh, I saw it in the theater uh, at 12 years old. But um, yeah, that, that was the one movie that kept me up. And it doesn't have a lot of blood. I've actually not seen that one. I've not really? Seen, I've not seen any of the Halloweens. Well, have you seen uh, like Friday the 13th? Just the first one, I think. All right. But, well, yeah. there's another... Uh, the movies that made us episode from Friday the 13th. I haven't watched that one yet, but I saw like a little blurb from it. And the guy, the guy's saying, Hey, Halloween's making a lot of money. Let's rip it off. And that was a direct quote from the, the meeting, <laughs> you know, let's make a movie. So there have been a lot of killers that cannot be killed that keep sitting up after they get stabbed, you know, since how, uh, since Michael Myers, but he was the first. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that one out. So and just watch the first one. I don't I don't like any of the other ones. I like about a lot of those chain movies. It's like the first couple are good, but then it just... Yeah, I agree. And and for, for whatever reason, except for the Rob Zombie one, uh, the mask was always looked dumb. Even in the new one, I just watched Halloween Kills, and uh, I don't know. It just doesn't look as good. The, the, the first mask was, was a was a Captain Kirk mask. They just painted white and cut the hair on it, and it looked so scary. Well, I feel like these days they mess up a lot with that. Like, I don't know, they just, it's too much CGI or it's too much this, or I feel like there's some less ingenuity than what there used to be. And they keep going back to the same well, you know? Like, yeah. it'd, be, it'd be nice to see not just my book, but so many other people's books in the horror community, like, with the fresh take, the indie vision, you know? Like, I would think it'd be good if any one of us gets a movie, maybe somebody would tap into the, you know, more indie uh, stuff and it'd be good for everybody. So on the note of indie and self-publishing, um, what was the deciding factor for you? Um, had it been kind of similar to like that Everest story where you pitch it out and then like you just decided to take the reins on your own or did, was it always just... Like you wanted it to be your story and maintain control the whole time. Well, I didn't know what to do. I didn't pitch it to anybody. I just was like, um, how am I going to do this? Uh, and I didn't want, 
like I'm self-employed, so I'm kind of like used to making all the decisions and not waiting for somebody to give me an answer. And I kind of felt that way about about the book too. Like I'm again, I'm I'm a middle-aged man or or more than that. And you know, I've heard what some people have to do to you know, submit and then like I think it took Laurel Hightower like 9 years to get Whispers in the Dark out or something like that or write it. Uh, she kept revising, whatever it took, took forever. I don't have that kind of time. And, um, and I wouldn't, it almost seems to me like you're looking for the right person to like your stuff, you know, like even, you know, Harry Potter, everybody was rejecting it. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's obviously a money-making idea. So, but it took you know one single person to tell her editor or whatever the, her boss to, Hey, you might want to take a look at this. Um, so I, I think I found the Facebook group, uh, 20 books to 50 K and I started reading a bunch of their posts. It's all like, you're not allowed to self promote on it. You have to, you know, ask to join and all that stuff. Started reading a bunch of their stuff. And, um, I don't know. I just, you know, I winged it. I, I, I made a lot of mistakes. I spent too much money doing it. And, um, but in the end, um, while it wasn't efficient and there was a lot of wasted motion and effort and money, uh, I'm on your show. So, <laughs> you know, in a way, uh, people noticed and uh, the book was good enough to be noticed. So, you know, I look at my reviews and I see a certain star rating, you know, average. And I'm like, OK, you know, at least at least at least I feel like I belong here. And uh, now I want to go through like a a a, a, uh, a small press, like a um, what's the word? A um, respected small press that that um, I, I'd like to learn their end of it and and what it's like to publish for them. And I'd like to like coordinate what I know with my what I know in marketing it to with what they're gonna do, like. For instance, like if they're going to send out arcs, you know, I'll make T-shirts up and I'll, you know, I've been slowly buying these uh, T-shirts that I like, you know, with my Discover cash back and stuff. And I'm going to have a bunch printed. I don't know, just things to, to if people from the horror community are wearing a T-shirt, you know, with my book on it, that's pretty cool. Uh and uh, I, I had mugs made for the patients of a dead man. I had 72 mugs made. I, I didn't know it was going to be, um, you don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. And I had these, I don't have one in front of me here, but it's a nice 20 ounce mug. And, and um, I started mailing those out. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's because people drink coffee every day and it's a nice big mug that you can put all the milk you want on top of your coffee. But you know, I saw a lot of pictures of my mug and, and like, if you see like Brad Proctor's bookshelf behind him, it's, it's there and it's on well-read beards. And I don't know, it was, that was a good move. And, and I think you need to pick something that you like, uh, whether it's like the, the kind of t-shirt that I buy, it's one that I really wear. It's like moisture wicking and so on and so forth, or a coffee mug you drink from every day. Um, just something to be different, you know, think outside the box and try to get people to, uh, to read your book, I guess. Well, Leslie from Nerdy Narrative is why I even know you exist. Because when I first started my channel a little over a year ago, she was reading Patients of a Dead Man. And she was like one of the first people to find my channel. And so I was watching her read the whole series. And I was like, okay, I need to get this. So someone actually bought it for me. But I was like, sweet, once I got it, I chugged through the whole thing. Like, yeah, I saw she just got it for um, Northwest Reader. Uh, uh, Christina too. Uh, like it's just on there tonight. And I, it's, it's so, it's so good to find somebody like Leslie that, you know, like an advocate. Uh, it, I thank you so much for, for doing that, Leslie. And Nikki's also been great. And you know, mother horror has been great too. Uh, so many people, well read beard. Um, you only need a, a handful, you know, uh, it, like not everybody's going to like your stuff, but if you find, um, you know, enough people that'll give your book away or recommend it. You know, like I saw when I saw Leslie's uh, review, I was just like 
damn, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. I felt like a star, you know, and it, it was just very, very flattering. And, um, you know, it makes it's reaffirming because I, we all, you know, uh, you know, um, imposter syndrome, you know, it's, it's, I honestly didn't have it when I was writing this. I was kind of like, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, and I'm getting good feedback. And then I did with this, with the, that Mount Everest one. And I was like, damn, this sucks. <laughs> but, um, yeah, to see, you know, that kind of support and, and uh, Leslie's video and stuff, that was uh, that was a big day. Yeah. That was cool. Um, I'm going to ask you a pre-submitted question before I forget. It's from my friend Amanda. She read these books. Um, for the first one, she wanted to know, because of the uh, oscillating of time between the journal and the present, um, and because of the specifics of the days of the week, she wanted to know if you had the calendars of the years, like in front of you. Kind yes. Of like and, and I, and I actually, it was a pain in the butt. Sure it was. <laughs> oh, I, 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 you don't know how many times I had to redo those calendars. And then, um, I recently, uh, like I, I know that this, this was my first book, you know, the, the book one. and. I'm like, something's bothering me. I, I'm going to, I've written four books now. One's not published. I need to go back and just make sure that it, there was, my goals were so different when I wrote this, this first book here, because I, I was, I actually went out and I bought a copy of Pet Cemetery, like one of my favorite Stephen King's. It's not, it's not it. It's not, you know, phone book thick. It's, it was, you know, I thought it was short and sweet and to the point as much as he can be. I'm like, okay, it's 500 pages and there's, you know, 300 words on a page. And I, I really tried to fit, fill my book that way. And, uh, and I did. And I think there was a lot of wasted prose and I think I took a few lumps for that in some of the reviews. So I went through it and I did it again. And uh, I realized that going back to the calendars that <laughs> I had something that happened in the 1969 calendar that, um, couldn't happen. So, <laughs> in the book you have there, the the complete version, that still has the old version of book one in it. Oh, so that's actually different, and it has the error in it. But the new one is is a smaller book. I didn't cut any scenes out, but it's tighter. And I found that mistake with the calendars, and uh, I also had a because it's finally complete i did a you know, i had a amazon does hard covers now so i did the hard cover on that too and i i plan on going through them slowly eventually all three of them will be like that and maybe i'll do that with uh with this one too and it'll be as it won't be as thick probably but anyway uh yeah the calendars good question that was amanda that asked that yes. yeah that was a big pain in the butt um and more than I thought it would be, you don't know how many I crumpled up and threw away, <laughs> but like there's pictures of the calendars I ended up with in the book. And uh, those are the final result. Um, I didn't really look at those. So maybe some of the pictures are wrong, but some of the entries, the journal entries said like 1969. I'm like, that, that couldn't have happened. <laughs> so I had to cut it out in the new version. Did you um, write all three books at once? Or did the other two come after you'd already published Patience? Uh, <clears throat> um, they came out after. I didn't know what to do. I, I Again, I sat down to write Dead Woman Scorn, the second one. And I'm like, my goal is 100,000 words. That, like, that's just not the way you should. I don't think you should start that way. But I was still new, and I, and I did start it that way. And I'm like how am I going to do that? I know I'm going to have to explain some of the things that Mildred did in the first book because, and you know why, yeah. but so I had to go like make an origin story. And basically I, about 50,000 words is Mildred's upbringing. And then you go back to finish, you know, the, uh, the original story, which was, was a cliffhanger at the end of, the, of book one. I'll tell people that. Yeah, it was. They were both cliffhangers. At the end of both yeah movies. and i hated doing that too i mean i love that in a movie like i was so used to seeing that in whatever you know flash gordon or something you know ming the merciless takes the ring 
at the end is it it says the end with a question mark i mean at least it you know like oh like kind of wrap it up to a certain degree but it's a promise of more um but it was painful for me to write book one and then leave people hanging for months you know so i was glad to when they were all done and i i don't feel like i've left anybody hanging anymore yeah it was definitely nice having the entire bind up so i could just yeah page and move on especially after the second book i was like no no hold on <laughs> <laughs> that was that was good for sure i like that but i see jay maddox and ebony ebony i love ebony she's one of my thanks for coming friends as well ebony actually um she was uh kind of an assistant for a literary agency for a little while reading people's submissions and stuff and she has her own little book series that she has to a small press so she has all this little experience in doing all of that too. oh she, cool. cool she was actually on my my little readers versus writers with leslie my i think i watched that one yeah so that was a good time <laughs> <laughs> um I feel like I just had a question that slipped my mind. We were talking about calendars and then we were talking. Well, I guess with that, and because of in the second book, there is more time jumps, but I don't think that they were specific days, were they? Or was it harder to keep the dates in the second book than it was in the first? Uh, the whole thing has been like, I try not to, I, for, for people that haven't read it and are listening, I, I hate, time jumps you know like when i'm watching something I, I try to make it so it's like either plain as day or or don't do it at all i i, I did not want i want it to be easy reading if anything like i don't want it to be a confusing book i think i heard you talking about um on one of your shows i was listening watching it today it was um shutter island mm. and you said that was a confusing movie and then the guest author said that it was even a worse book I don't want to do that. I want it to be simple. So the only thing I think in the uh, time jumps in, in Dead Woman Scorned are only because we're, we're talking about Mildred as a kid, and then we might have to go back to Tim and Holly, who are in the in book one. You know, So it's kind of like that, I think, right? I mean, do you remember anything else that you're specifically that might have been confusing or? No, not, no, nothing was confusing for me. Okay. I was wondering if it was confusing for you, <laughs> trying to keep up with that. Well, it, it's awesome. still confusing for me because I have this database. Um, on I use Airtable. It's a website, and there's like a free version. And I'm actually going back right now. And uh, I'm, I'm, in addition to this graphic novel thing, I'm also, I have like 8,000 words written for what I think will be a novella uh, about Annette, the previous owner of the house. Now she, she wrote all these journals about seeing a little ghost boy running around. And what I had to do was go through book one and reaffirm every date. This is how I found that 1969 error. And, and then find gaps where I can write new stuff. So it's just not like a, regurgitation of book one you know reading her journals like she has to she has to have some new adventures in there or, or it'll be boring and um uh she oh I'm losing my train of thought now <laughs> um by the way too i'm I, like i have a cold i sound terrible but i, I don't feel this terrible um <sighs> help me out here <laughs> i will just i will gear toward a different topic because i wanted to tell you actually some of the scary stuff that happened to me while i was reading this book of yours michael clark because i was staying in an airbnb and it was a house and i was all by myself and the first night i started reading it at night like a dumb dumb but <laughs> that was the first night and it was just me in this big old house and then there was just all these footsteps <laughs> going around and i was oh, like oh god I'm alone in this house and like i went outside i was like there's no other lights on like anything else like that's really weird and then a few days later i was reading it and um 
like I, I went to the bathroom and I came out and I had this big scratch just down the side of my body. And like, I opened it up and the next, like the first line of the next chapter was him having a big scratch down his arm. And oh, I was wow. Like, well, that's really weird. And then as soon as I finished, I was talking with one of my friends just about hanging out or whatever. And he um, gave me the address to his house and it was on Mildred way. And I was like, this is kind of weird over here. Yeah. Was that your trip to New Hampshire, by the way, or? No, that was here in San Diego. Okay. When that happened. Damn. Um, that, like, yeah. yeah. No, I was like, <laughs> like I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> One time when I was a kid, I was reading uh, Agatha Christie's um, Ten Little Indians, and uh, I was home alone and. And it was a very windy day. And I think one of the storm windows was like open like a an inch or something. And all of a sudden the wind like caught it and it whistled like a train, like like you know, two rooms away kind of a thing. And I'm alone and I I, I just I went to the neighbors. <laughs> it was like woo, you know, like like damn. Uh, was there anything when you were writing this book that freaked you out? Or like what like do you get freaked out having her standing right behind you right now? Like, <laughs> no, but you know what? <clears throat> right outside this room here, like I, I, I kind of look for that stuff now because I. Spoiler alert: I don't really believe in ghosts, but you know, I, I, I still get creeped out by stuff. Mm -hmm. And I come out of my bedroom and to go to use the restroom, and you have to look down the stairs, and there's a landing, and for whatever reason the I do it all the time, obviously. I live here. But there was a shadow in the corner of the landing like that I've never seen. I had to look twice. I'm like, there could be somebody in that shadow. like if, you know, And that kind of freaked me out. So um, while I was writing it, nothing real. You know, I was trying to just think of the creepiest thing. Like it all started like I kind of built the whole book around the, the first night that he's working alone in the house, he plans on Tim plans on working 18 hour days because he's got to flip this place. And of course he sees something and he runs, which is what I would do. And then, but I would also be like, wait a second, that house is my whole life. I lost my previous life in the divorce. My, I don't even have my kids. I mean, I know I'm going to visit them and they're going to visit me, but, um, his ex-wife is so difficult that if he says something like, uh, my house is haunted, she's going to say, nope, no kids. Or, you know, just make it, she, she, his ex-wife in the book lives to make his like, life difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does. So he's got to keep his mouth shut. And he's also got to, he's standing in the middle of his field, looking back at the house, thinking, where the hell am I going to go? I mean, I could go to a bar and get drunk and come home but it's still going to be creepy and still going to have the same problem uh i could sleep overnight in a hotel but i can't afford to do that every night and sooner or later i'm going to have to go back anyway so he goes back and i won't tell you what happens but that kind of fear that kind of tension was exactly what i was going for so you know i, I made up all those scenes obviously but i was trying to think of the creepiest things i could think of yeah, well, I think you did a good job. Out of the three books in the trilogy, do you have a favorite? Yeah, it's book one, just because you know, I I think, I think it's uh, the origin story, you know, and and it was my first thought, and it's got my not because it's my first thought, but I don't know why. I it's it's my baby. I think a lot of a lot a lot of people like. Dead Woman scorned more. I think maybe the because the characters become more well rounded. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I was very proud to get Well Read Beard's best novel of 2020. Right. Thank you, uh, Kevin, for that. Uh, humble brag. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I had to like stretch it a little bit and go back into her origin and make up some things that. I think are new. Like I, I'm also tired of cliches and things I've seen before. You know, like I'll I'll probably never uh, write a, a vampire novel. I, I was, I mean, it seems like the same thing over and over. Although I did read um, 
Glenn Rolfe's uh, Until Summer Comes Around. And that was like a fresh take for me. Like if, if you like something, if you like vampires, write about vampires because you're probably going to do it better than I would. You know, everybody should write what they like. Um, but anyway, going back to I hate cliches. I'm trying to write something new. Like I know we all want a, a taste of something that's familiar. Um, <clears throat> but I also, with the Mount Everest story, like I, re I, don't, I don't think there's a Mount Everest horror story. And my beta readers were like, because they don't think the dead bodies on Mount Everest are creepy, were like, I, I don't care about Mount, Mount Everest, whatever, you know. But I, I've i watched the documentaries. I've seen the dead body that, that everybody has to walk past, and he's been laying there for 10 years. And I did my best to put that on paper. But it's, it's, it's kind of a new, I don't know if uh, to be so bold as to call it a new trope. But I don't think it's been done in in quite that way, and that's kind of what I'm I'm trying to do: fresh takes on, or not fresh takes, but a fresh idea that's still horror. Um, and then I, but I'm also dancing close to that line where, um, you know, it should be familiar. You know, people want familiarity. Like they go to see the new Star Wars movie, they wanna they wanna see the Millennium Falcon. You know, like they don't want to see all new stuff you need to give a taste of what they already know so i tried to with that too so yeah like and mildred is uh unique too so she uh, is. yeah i won't tell you how but you know <laughs> oh, you cannot that would, <laughs> that would be a big spoiler for anyone yeah who have read these books which everybody should read these books because i I enjoyed them. I'm going to have to read them again now that I've like spoken to you and then thought about things. <laughs> well, if you want to save some time, I'll send you the the uh, if you have a Kindle, I'll say send you the uh, the book one because it'll save you. I, I think it's better written than the original, and it, I didn't I didn't do a George Lucas and change it like you know so that the story's different. You know, it's it's yeah. the same story, it's just tighter prose. Yeah, but I mean, I enjoyed it definitely for sure. Thank you. It's a very, I mean, the whole, all three of them were very quick reads for me. So you were saying earlier that you wanted it to be, you know, and like straightforward and not confusing and all of that. So that was how it came across to me. I just tore through them real fast. Yeah, good. Because I, like I, I, going back to my prose, I don't know who I write like or whatever, but I think I took a few, you know, a few hits on that. Some people like, the word play of you know it's almost like poetry when it's well written you know like say eric laroca or something you know he he's he's got a, a way with words I, I don't think i do i just think it's more like shortest point from you know from point a to point b although like i said in book one if you read it early on it was it was a little little puffy <laughs> Well, I wouldn't have noticed. Well, thank you. Yeah, I like the finished product for sure. Um, do you have a favorite character or one that you at least enjoyed writing the most for all of their scenes? Yeah, it would be Mildred. Yeah. Um, and then I would say Tim is is kind of like me. I, I am divorced. I did have kind of a, like a difficult marriage. It's based on it. It's not exactly what happened of course but um yeah, you know exaggerated. what's that I said always exaggerated yeah you know yeah absolutely um but you know like there's a little bit of truth in everything you write and um um i was desperate like that for a little while you know like i don't have anything i really don't care if i get on a plane and it crashes at least i die on vacation you know i mean it, that's a, that's that's weird thinking um, especially when you have kids and stuff, you know, that are not living with you anymore, but there's a bitterness, there's a, you know, F you kind of attitude to it. And, uh, you're pissed that you, you know, it was taken from you and it wasn't your decision kind of a thing. You get over it. Don't, don't get me wrong and whatever, but, um, yeah, going back to the favorite character, I'd say it's gotta be Mildred because, um, I like the creepiness and um and then I I do like what 
you know, I, I like the origin too. So she's she's flawed. She's not a good person, but there's a reason why she's not a good person. So she's fun to write. And I think I also like hiding her. I don't I don't think if I made a movie, I don't think I would ever show her face. Oh. Yeah, because I mean, no, like she doesn't have a face on the cover or any of the covers. I mean, no, right behind you, can't see her face. Well, but, that's the that's the cover to the book you're holding. I'll I'll hold it up here. So yeah, I blackened out the face. I made that cover or most of it. Was it yeah, I, I I like to leave it. It's kind of like Jaws, you know, where where the yeah. shark is scarier when it's underwater. Uh, I read something by Ridley Scott where. They hid the alien on purpose, you know, and, uh, you know, anytime you leave it up to the imagination, you know, like it was kind of a bummer that they showed Darth Vader without his helmet on, you know, it, I, well, my first thought was he looks like Humpty Dumpty, mm -hmm. you know, but because he was, he yeah. was the best villain of all time, you know, for, for those years and yeah. uh, Star Wars misses him and the mask was just the best, you know. It should have been left on or, or something. You should, I don't know. To, to, I think I was watching that movie, um, Winchester. It's a bad horror movie. It's about a terrible movie. It is a terrible movie. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the ghosts are so well lit. Yeah. Like they walk in the hallway and you see a ghost. And it's like he's sitting for a photograph. You know, yeah. he's got, he's so well lit. I mean, you can see everything. There's nothing left to the imagination. And it should be. Yeah. Yeah, that was an awful movie. Have you been yeah. to the Winchester house though? Just as a no. Side? It's yeah. I think that was part of the reason I thought it was such a terrible movie because it's such an like an incredible house and it's so mysterious and it's oh, so, so it's cool to go there. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh I've okay. Probably three or four times because I used to live closer to it as well. Yeah. So it was easier, but yeah, I've probably been three or four times and it really is like such. A trip. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I, see, I got turned off. Like, I'm like, I now that's probably, you know, the house is probably even less scary than that. But now you've changed my mind. If I'm yeah. ever out there, I'll, I'll try to check that out. Yeah, you definitely should. Because the, the house itself is certainly uh, an experience. And one of the times I went, um, there was this one room that they were like, does anyone want to go in here alone? And I was like, I'll do it. And I went in alone. And I was just like, oh, this is like. Oh, can I get out now? <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. And then it was like a weird, like they shut the door and then like move it. You know what I mean? Because like, like really, things in that house are so strange. Huh. Like, it's the weirdest things. And she was, I mean, four foot ten. I'm six foot six. So there's like places you have to like duck and like get down and like all the. It was. It's just weird. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And. Huh. Under you know, like they're like it just never they just stopped as soon as she died. Yeah, there's like staircases to nowhere and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Just like you open the door and it just falls off and or you open the door and there's a wall or I don't know, yeah, it's just such a strange huh. but such a like that was why I was so upset with that movie because it was such a good concept from a real perspective, you know, of having actually like been there and seen it. It's just like, oh, they really yeah. done so much with that. They could have made it like so much darker, like not that, that not that it, you know, too dark is not good, but just creepier. You know, you, you don't want to see around the corner. You know, you want to, you don't want the hallway to be lit when it's, when you turn the corner. Yeah. But uh, a patient of a dead man did not flub. <laughs> <laughs> good. Not yeah. Not. I don't, I don't think I would ever show her face and, and uh, you know, she's, she should be, she should be different to, each and every person, you know, mm -hmm. like your idea of her is probably different than mine. I just try to give you just enough. Mm -hmm. Which I think that you do well. And I, I didn't even think about like not seeing her face. Like, I don't know, which is like, I mean, it's a book, so you don't really ever, it's always like the picture in your own head. Yeah. But even you saying that, it's like thinking back on it, it's like you, you never did describe her That's face. like me with a. I I didn't know that Halloween didn't have blood in it. You know, I mean, right. it does have blood, but not very much. It's it's right. yeah. You don't realize it, but that was by design. You know. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, cool. 
Well, outside of that uh, Mount Everest horror story, is there anything else brewing up in that mind of yours, or any other genres you'd ever want to dabble in, or do you just like do you do you like the horror stuff? Well, like I used to like I love Michael Crichton, but I don't have like a science background. I don't think I could write anything like that. You know, like he he. He'd write all about the science of the dinosaurs and stuff, and and it was made it interesting, and, or or whatever book it was, you know. And uh, so I think you have to stick to what you know. And I'm I'm not a scientist or anything like that. So I did like him. I love Thomas Harris. I don't know what you call Silence of the Lambs. Is that horror? Or is it like crime or a combination of the two? Uh, I'd love to. I was looking into doing like a like a serial killer thing. And <clears throat> excuse me, God, this cold. Um, and I had my booster the other day, by the way. So I just it's got not. My day, so I feel it. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. Uh, my arm hurts really bad. <laughs> yeah, mine did too. Um, I had I bought a couple cases of Powerade, and you know whether it's water or yeah, you know, I think just the stay hydrated. First, personally, like as soon as she put it in, I was like, wow, that was really the worst shot out of all of them right now. Uh. And then all day I've just been like, <laughs> yeah, I, I fell asleep too. It, 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 I had, I was a little bit achy, but I was so full of this stuff that I, I had a only mild headache. Uh, I did Moderna the first time and then uh, the first two times. And then I did Pfizer this time, but um, anyway, that was Friday. So over that now, but I'm, I do have this cold and what the heck were we talking about? <laughs> we were, <laughs> What were we talking about? I, don't know. <laughs> I, got, I got sidetracked by the COVID. Yeah, sorry. These days, oh my gosh. Yeah. Which is, California is going back into mask mandate tomorrow, so that would be fun. Oh, really? Yeah, we're not doing good here either in masks. Like the whole Northeast is is bad, and a, my sister in law is a doctor, and she says like the they're putting people in, you know, regular people, not regular, but patients in operating rooms and stuff like the hospitals are full again and uh, will it ever end but we were talking about your idea of a serial killer or something oh that's what it was yes i bought a book like you know the like a catalog of serial killers you could probably find it on amazon that's where i found it and i start looking you know like like i thought that um obviously Jane Gum in, in Silence of the Lambs was pretty unique. Like, you know, he's, ooh, he, he wants to wear the skin of a woman, you know. And then I realize he's based on, um, uh, what's his name? Do you, do you remember his name? Uh, no, but like I know. Ed, Ed Gein, I think it was. G-E-I-N, if I'm not mistaken. And then he was also Psycho. Psycho was based on the same guy. So I'm thinking, oh. I'm going to go invent my own you know mix and match and and then i realized that like uh, if there's a hundred serial killers in the in this book most of them are just guys that like you know abduct hookers and and pick on women and children and it's just i don't know it's disgusting i i heard hunter shea saying that he hates serial killers like he'll never write one because it kind of glorifies them and uh you know, and I, I, I kind of like I, I put the idea aside anyway because I couldn't. Thomas Harris did a great job, and I love it, but I don't know. As far as other things that I'm working on, I'm, I'm going to do that little that novella with Annette from Patients of a Dead Man, you know, who left the journal for Tim and Holly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also, I have an idea to do um, Andrew from. Uh, dead woman scorned and, and um, anger is an acid who who ran the funeral home and got his sister killed mm -hmm. uh, and his mother is haunting him I, I think I'm going to do a story with that and then I've got this graphic novel thing going um, and it's I don't know I'm having I'm just kind of like having fun you know like I, I it was it was quite a year and a half two years getting these books out and marketing them and stuff and and now that like i have a, a book submitted to a publisher and and um, there's not as much money in writing as i thought there was going to be you know like you know i i realized that almost everybody in the community is 
still has a day job, you know, and God bless them. I mean, I do too. Um, and we have to, but I just, I mean, it's not like the old days when, you know, I read uh, Stephen King on writing. I think he got $400,000 for Carrie, you know, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's yeah. like $400,000. Yeah. Unheard of this, like. <laughs> 1970 whatever money you know and it's like yeah. you know hey, Carrie wasn't even a good book to like in my yeah opinion. yeah like, i know like i mean i obviously like it was his first so he's grown but even apart from that like i really did not like that book very much at all yeah exactly and but that's what we did you know like it was either a book or a movie and now now like even movies are in trouble i think you know mm -hmm. everybody's like you know it's either a netflix movie or I don't well, know if theater, theaters are going to make it. Earlier, like it's all recycled ideas. Like now, there's another screen coming out. They're still making Halloween. There's, you know what I mean? Like there's. So oh, many that's why I wrote. That's why I started writing. I'm like, I'm sick of this. I I actually was talking to friends, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to yeah. write something. And uh, at least, uh, at least not, of like, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, there's also that element of writing what you want to read. You know, like when you take on a book for yourself, like yeah aspect of like what what do i feel like is missing from the shelf right now that i would want to pick up in a yes I, I, exactly like and and like it if you're gonna like some people can crank out three books a year or more than that even and, and I, I know that that's not me so, uh it's, you know so it's i'm just gonna keep it as a hobby and uh just go where my heart goes and um you know, I'm still like figuring out what the next step is going to be. Like, I, I want to keep writing stuff. Um, but I'm also going to have fun drawing too, I think, unless it sucks. <laughs> and I'll be honest with myself and I'll say like, uh, well, I, I tried, but it didn't work. But so far, like I said, I've got this stack of paper and I'm kind of surprising myself. And I'm like, I don't know how long it would take to really turn it into a graphic novel but probably years but uh so far it's moving i don't know it's weird That's, that sounds super fun yeah like it's it's it, it, and it's something you could do in front of the tv like I, i've written in front of the television but it's always you got to put headphones on you're kind of drowning out the tv you're drowning out your your family and uh at least with when you're drawing, you're listening to the TV, you can talk and that kind of thing. So I feel better about that too. Yeah. Well, I look forward to the finished product. Of Thank you. Whenever it might be done. Yep. Well, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> yes, please do. You now have all my contact information. So yeah, and, and like you know, if you want to do that, you, you were talking about the. Uh, readers versus writers yeah i'd love to have you let me know me. let me know yeah anytime yeah, super fun especially if we could i mean i think i'd want to still pair you with nikki because i thought that was going to be a fun one she's great yeah absolutely yeah, nikki great. leslie anybody any you know any, a friend of nikki's is a friend of mine a friend of yours is a friend of mine yes yes well sir um is there anything else that you would like to leave us with on the note of your trilogy or future works just a big thank you for having me on. I think I talked about my stuff and I've been talking about these books for two years and people probably like are saying, when is he coming out with something new? Uh, well, I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> people get it too, especially I feel like with indie authors, you know, where we have to do it all ourselves, if, you know? Like, yeah. Ever, and uh, like, you know, to be honest, like if you've seen me on another podcast like i haven't profited i've made money i'm a member of the horror writers association but with all the marketing stuff and buying mannequins and banners that i have to use only on my podcast because covid closed down all the cons and stuff you know it's like an expensive hobby until until it's not i guess until the day that you go viral <laughs> if that ever happens Sometimes there's sleeper hits. And I mean, you you yeah. did in the shelf life of books earlier, but I mean, it's been over a year since I've heard about this book and I'm still hearing about this book. So I feel like there's also something to be said for that as well. Because I know people who are still reading it for the first time. I was thinking about that today too. Like if I, I'm still, if I make a graphic novel, I mean, 
we're going to probably be talking about like this guy won't quit. He's still talking about his book for six years or whatever, you know, like maybe somebody will hear it, <laughs> you know, rather than like, let's say my Mount Everest book comes out and I don't go after it like I do this one. And it just, you know, becomes another book in the thing. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Time will tell. As it always does. Yes. As it always does. All right, Michael. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And anyone who is still here in this video, you can find links to Michael's profiles and works in the description box. So Yeah, thanks for coming. And I hope you feel better, Andrew. Oh, yeah. You too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got, I'm going to blow my nose as soon as the camera's on. <laughs> all right. Well, I will end this broadcast now. And thank you all so much. And I hope everyone has a day just as beautiful as you. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank Bye. you.